We're here today at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport and I'm here with my friends at Breachy Aviation. I'm excited to bring you along. We're going to fly the Vision Jet from Fort Lauderdale over to Nassau and we're going to check out one of the biggest super mega yachts in the world. Let's get this started. I said it before and I'll say it again. Life moves pretty fast. It's not about personality matrices and charts. It's all about the bumps in your heart. Alright everybody, welcome aboard the Vision Jet. Thanks Charlie for having us on board. We'll start this thing up. Throw on battery two. Battery two is coming on. Battery one's coming on. Everything's just initializing right now. Correct. I'm gonna go and check this page to come up. Excellent. Okay, put the strobe lights on. Strobe lights coming on. Yep. And then now you can take your run dial for the engine. Take it to run. Going to run. Mm -hmm. Stand by. Start. And we'll push. One time firmly. Let it go. There we go. We're getting our light off. Looking at the. Uh, I'm watching ITT. I'm looking at a bunch of other numbers, but that would be my abort plan. Okay. That's a good start. Go Gen 1, Gen 2. Okay, put your landing light on. Alright, good start. So yeah, we have an exciting day today. Uh, we're going to be flying this vision generator over to NASA. We'll be going VFR. 17,500 is what uh, the altitude we're going to take. A affirmative. And when we get over there, we're going to check out our friend Captain Matt, who is the captain of one of the biggest luxury yachts in the world. We'll get the ATIS here. Good luck, Dallas Air Tower. Mission Lima, 1453 Zulu, wind 140 at 11, visibility 10, still in 2400 broken, temperature 27, dew point 22, altimeter 3001. Hot left or local after runway 9 approaching you, flying apart at runway 9 and runway 13. Notice the airman, bird advisor is in effect. Auto point and picture of your aircraft, contact clearance delivery, 127.95 prior to taxi. All aircraft readback, runway 7, hold short instructions, advise on initial contact, you have information. Lima. All right, we have information Lima. That's the current ATIS here at Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport. Hey, Executive Clearance, Vision Jet 777 Charlie Bravo, information Lima, VFR eastbound. Just keep our eye on file, please. VFR eastbound 1200. 777 Charlie Bravo, Executive Clearance, contact Albert Taxi. Over to ground, 777 Charlie Bravo. All right, we'll let clearance delivery know what our plan of action is. And now we're going to go over to ground frequency here. Ground Vision Jet Triple Seven Charlie Bravo is Charlie Two Ray Taxi of Lima. Vision Jet Triple Seven Charlie Bravo Roger Runway Niner Taxi via Charlie Echo Hold Short of One Three. Runway Niner via Charlie Echo Hold Short Runway One Three Vision Jet Triple Seven Charlie Bravo. And I tested my brakes. Good. Your brakes good. Here's your armrest for you. So yeah, I'd like to welcome everybody on board. This is my second time flying the Vision Jet. Security One, disregard that. Thank you. Me and Charlie, we flew up to Heaven's Landing, up in 19, 19, northeast so Georgia last time. And today is going to be a little bit different, going Bravo out over into the Bahamas. I fly as a professional pilot in my career. Today we're just flying for fun. And uh, I partnered with PilotInstitute.com. And there's a lot of free courses that they provide that are amazing. And it's all linked in the description below. They also have some paid courses to help you get through all your ratings. And also, I use the iPad Mini 6 when, with the pivot case systems and the mounts. That's also linked in the description below, pivot cases. With my discount code, you can save 15%. Okay. 
drop across runway 13 at Echo, continue to runway 9. Cross 13 at Echo, continue to runway 9 or Vision Jet, triple seven, Charlie Bravo. Yeah, if you hear a lot of Charlie Bravos, my DA-62 is flying, oh, 22 is flying, yeah, so you're going to hear a bunch of Charlie Bravos. So the DA-62 is taxi right now, so we're using caution for that, using our full call sign. Okay, so this is one tree. We're cleared to cross, cleared to the left, and cleared to the right. It, Charlie's got a uh, flight school here, Breachy Aviation here at Fort Lauderdale Executive. If you guys are looking to go to an, a premier flight school, check this place out that Charlie runs here. He's got an amazing fleet of airplanes. We have a SR-20, a 22 Turbo, we have a Extra 300, a DA-62, the Vision Jet we're flying today, and Skyhawk. And we typically sell two or three of our planes every year or so. <laughs> and we get a couple more. Listen, someone just got a pilot deviation. Yep, I just heard that. I must be having radio problems here today. Uh, I'm parked at Banyan, Banyan North. So this is G3000, correct? Bravo, Roger. How do you hear this frequency? Or uh, how do you hear this transmission? Right, so this is G3000. Technically, it's Garmin Perspective Plus Touch. Like when you get into the Honda Jet or the TBM 930, you'll see a third screen in here. But you have your GTCs, your Garmin Touch Controls, and it's essentially the same thing. Actually, that's Maker's Air. My old job, they fly right here in front of us. Expect your clearance closer. That's one of their newer caravans. So we're going to rotate around 85 knots? Correct, yep. You've got all your speeds right here. You can glance at them right before we get on the runway again. Okay, perfect. All our checklists are done. We did all our safety briefings. We'll just do a, a quick recap. Our survival equipment's all the way in the back next to Elise. November There goes Makers Air. Going out to the Bahamas also. Now we're down to the Staniel Key Yacht Club. Well, I love hearing the uh, turbine spool up and down when you yeah, it's manipulate fun. the throttle. It's a lot more fun compared to a turboprop. Watermaker 634, runway 9 and Alpha 2, line up and wait traffic, Navajo 2 and a half miles, left face. Line up and wait, Alpha 2, Watermaker 634. We'll wait right here in case for some reason this guy doesn't want to get going. We could still make Alpha 2 if they want to give us that. Yeah, yeah I like where your head's at. November 433, Mike Julia, runway 9 line up and wait traffic, 2 miles final. Line up and wait, uh, 433, Mike Julia, 29. Kodiak 252 Kilo, Roger. November 3, 4, Juliet, extend downwind. 3, Roger, yes. After row 422, exit attack away golf. And as a reminder, as we line up and you accelerate, you'll have your feet about halfway up. As that airflow and that speed increases and you get more airflow over that rudder, it'll become more effective. Then you bring your toes right. all the way to the bottom of the rudder Down to avoid bottom. riding the brakes. That's, that's really a serious thing with how the nose wheel works. Vision Jet November 777, Charlie Bravo, runway 9 line up and wait, traffic right down with 9 line up and wait, Vision Jet 777, Charlie Bravo. Clear final. Final's clear. Looking good. Aviation West. And on the runway, we just got somebody clearing. All right, look, hey, our DA-62 is off the right wing. There we go. That was the first one we flew together. We're going to line up and wait here. Line up here in the center line. There we go, all lined up, just wait for his call. November 7, Charlie Bravo fly eastbound, runway 9 clear for takeoff. Runway 9 clear for takeoff, fly eastbound, this jet triple seven, Charlie Bravo, here we go. Takeoff power is set. Yep, thrust is set. Hold the center line here. I'm going to start to shift my feet down. You can bring them all the way to the bottom of the rudder now, you got it, looking good. Looking for a rotation speed. Looking good. Got a little bit of a right cross one. Rotate. There we go. Rotate. Man, this thing gets up and there goes. There you go. I'll get your gear up. And I'll stand by for flaps. Looking really good. Lower that nose to about 7 degrees nose up for now. Sounds good. That'll be a good pitch attitude. All right. Flaps are up. Have flaps to take off checks. Seven, Charlie Bravo for faster traffic offset to the south. Roger, Clear to the right. Give me about a 110 heading. 110 heading? 135 knots for now. Up to 1,000 feet for now. And you can bring your, bring your thrust to max continuous. There we go, max continuous set. There's 1,000 feet, level up. And a 110 heading. 
We got somebody taking off that's faster than us. That's why we offset. And we got our yaw damper on. November 8th, Officer Charlie, waiting for release. All right. Go up to 2,000 feet, fly heading 105 now. 105, 2,000 feet? Yep, I'm going to navigate the airspace here. Calling to November 52 Kilo, runway 9 clear for takeoff, caution, wait through within flight straight out. Look at there, beautiful view out there. Coming up on the, uh, the beach over here. Man, it's nice and nice and quiet. Three, four, Yankee, runway nine clear to land. I can't get over how quiet it is inside this airplane. November seven, Charlie Bravo, for the change approved. Seven, Charlie Bravo, see you in a couple days. All right, we just getting outside of the Class Charlie airspace here, climbing up to 2,700 feet. As you can see out the front window now, it is a beautiful day out here in the Bahamas. So we've got direct to NASA programmed into the uh, computer system of the airplane here. I'm still hand flying it as I really don't know if I want the airplane to have all the fun. I like to enjoy hand flying this airplane. We're clear. We go up to 17.5 now. All right, 17.5. Yeah, go 15 degrees nose up for now. We'll use that speed. And then as the speed bleeds, we'll do a cruise climb at 165. 165. There we go. Hey, look at that VSI. Now we look like a Learjet. <laughs> 5,200 feet a minute. And there we are bleeding off. There you are, 165. perfect. 165. One of the things that ESP reacts to immediately, go ahead and just start banking to like the 60 degree mark right now. I want you to feel the pressure I'm talking about. Just start banking to it. You'll see these little ticks right here. Start pitching up a little more. Go past that 45 degree marker. Feel that pressure? Oh, yeah. Just let go of the stick. You'll see the airplane starts correcting it slowly. See that? Yeah, wow. Now, if you did fight that, let's do one to the right and actually get the, the ESP engagement. Go to the right, start that right turn. And just hold it at like 50 degrees. Go a little more, a little more. All right, now fight that pressure. You feel the fighting? airplane fighting? Oh, yeah. I want you to continue to fight it. Hold, the nose, it. hold the nose up. Yep, keep fighting it. Fighting it? Yep, just keep the turn going. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'm fighting it hard. Yep, keep fighting now. I want you to see what the computer does. Engaging All right, let go. Pilot. So it said engaging autopilot. It went to level mode, level mode, autopilot's on. And it says, hey man, let's go back to wings level. Wow, that keeps you really safe if you really start screwing things up. Yeah, there's there's some good technology in the plane. You just have to understand the systems. Yep, you can disengage the red button, turn us on course. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Oh, it's got that technology built in. Great view down yeah, there. Yeah, with this turn, you got a great shot of Bimini now. Oh, yeah, look at out the front here, guys. See, there is the island of Bimini, the closest island in the Bahamas to Florida, South Florida here. Great place to go explore. My two favorite spots in the Bahamas, a lot of people ask me, I love Staniel Key and the Exumas is my number one spot. And then I also love... Harbor Island up there by North Eleuthera. That's my second favorite area to go enjoy in the Bahamas. See that little switch right there that says enable. Can you turn that on? I just need the, turn the Wi-Fi on to notify oh, you got on, our... On board Wi-Fi too, We huh? do notify our ride that we are landing shortly. So Charlie, today, tell us uh, what we're going to go out here and explore on, at NASA. One of my students, I'm proud of all my students, one of my first students, the gentleman's name is Matt, and um, he finished at the bare minimum time at the time we were part 61. He finished at 40 hours, and um, he soloed on his second flight lesson. I couldn't believe it. He did have some, like, 10 hours of experience 10 years before, but this guy uh, was landing on center line with proper crosswind technique, you know, 8, 10 hours into training on the second flight lesson. And uh, he soloed, he, he has the record soloed on the second lesson and finished, uh, I think, about 22 days of training. And his, his background, he's been a yacht first officer and then a yacht captain for, for some pretty big, noticeable ships. And we're just really proud of him. So he was nice enough to offer us this tour of this uh, mega yacht that he's the captain of. And he's got a fantastic crew. Um, the ship, I think it... It, it, it's a million dollar, a million euros a week to charter out, plus tips and food. And, and he's, kinda, he's the captain of this boat. He's yeah. he sailed this thing all around the world, correct? That's correct. Yeah, you know, 
Talked to him a couple weeks ago. He's in France. A couple of weeks before that, he's here. He's there, and now they're doing a little, um, you know, kind of Bahamas Island charter thing. It's gonna be exciting. I'm excited to talk to a captain in the marine industry on a big vessel like this. As I'd like to compare the different challenges of being a captain on an airplane compared to also the challenges of what it's like to have be a captain on a big vessel like that. So it'll be interesting to talk with them and uh, have them show us like what it's all about. Yeah, I'll notice the. The guys and gals that are captaining ships, they, in flight training, they tend to be inherently smooth. They plan their turns out. Their, their SA, their situational awareness is very high. We're in a level off of 200 feet. Yep, there and and uh, that's just something I see consistent with anybody that's even, you know, if they have a small boat that they've been driving around in, uh, they're just inherently smooth. So uh, I see that transition. They, they usually are... are most successful, most expeditiously. There we go, level at 17,500 feet. Take a look out there off the left wing. That's what it looks like from 17,500 feet. Pick up the uh, information there at NASA. One tree north, visibility eight nautical miles, clouds scattered 2,000, scattered 5,500, broken 1, 2,000, temperature 8, 2 Fahrenheit, 2, 8 Celsius, 2.7, 2 Fahrenheit, 2, 2 Celsius, altimeter tree, 0, 0 tree. Arriving aircraft must contact NASA approach control on frequency 1, 2, 1, decimal 0. All participating VFR aircraft contact NASA approach control approximately 2, 5 nautical miles from airport and expect practice for sequencing. All the party aircraft must contact NASA delivery on frequency 118.3 prior to taxiing. Advise on initial contact you have ATIS information hotel. Right, yeah, two, All right, we got the uh, weather and information there at NASA. Delta 1944, you're following a slotation on a 7. Oh, 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 oh called out a slotation. <laughs> Bahamian ATCs not hold back today. All right, so we have our cruise checklist done. Our vertical navigation profile is set. We're starting our descent, eight minutes, 45 seconds. We'll call approach 25 out per their procedure. Perfect. Jake, you're back. Shut your feet. I came back for the music. And as you can see out the front now, we've got NASA in sight. We're going to be coming into runway 10. Alpha Victor Alpha, join left base 14, tower 19, 5. Good day. Good day, sir. Thank you, friend. I'm actually going to disconnect the autopilot and have a little ha fun here. Yay! Fun. That's what we love to hear. Go for it. Charlie 6, Charlie Alpha Yankee, NASA approach radar. And it'll just re engage the. Uh, yeah, damper. It'll engage by itself, yeah. It'll, it'll turn off at 200 feet. So that's when you. It'll get, automatically turn off yeah, at 200 feet? Yeah, you'll see the YD come off. And if you wanted it off before then, you could. You just push and hold the red button. Okay, how long do you have to hold it for to have it disengage? As soon as you hold it, it's. Charlie Bravo, you still have the citation inside 12 o'clock and 4 miles. We do, this is Jet Triple Seven, Charlie Bravo. We'll give you the proper space and we'll be slowing down to about 100 indicated momentarily. Roger, uh, he's going to slow down tremendously as well. Uh, Tower 19-5, advise them you have him in sight. Seven, Charlie Bravo, cool. He is going to slow down tremendously. Why does he want to slow down tremendously? <laughs> I think that's just the tower's experience with the citation, I guess. He's been bashing him a little bit this morning. You're right, he has. <laughs> NASA Tower Vision, Jet 777, Charlie Bravo, GPS 10, citation in sight. We'll be slowing down now, about 100 indicated. We'll give you the proper spacing. Number 777, Charlie Bravo, Roger. Continue, number 2, wind 120 at Nina. Continue, number two, this is Jet 777, Charlie Bravo. We got our runway in sight out there. Very good, Mon. Hey, okay, so we're going to go first notch of flaps. Selected. Clear to land, the one zero going to uh, Jet Nassau. Roger. And we also make sure it indicates. Indicating. Okay, let's go gear down. Gear selected. Down. Skyfall 510, right here, ground one two one seven. Kilo ground point seven sky four five ten. Thank you. One twenty for now is good. Okay, one twenty is what I'll be pitching for here. 
I'm going to take a look at his ground speed right now, see what he's doing. Okay. Alpha 6 Alpha, and by traffic departing, by your landing. All right. Okay, thank you. So he's doing 98. We're doing 110. So let's go 105 indicated now. 105 indicated. Well, look at the beautiful view of the beaches and the water down there. Three green. That's the second gear check. We can give Both you that right now. For back to four six. Okay. Watch the donut. That's going to give you your your well, V-Ref, your final perch speed. Okay. Wait until the full uh, flaps come down. I'll point out to you because it one continues one. to change with weight and other factors. Okay. Do you see the donut? I see the donut. traffic departing one four. Clear to land, runway 10, Vision Jet 777, Charlie Bravo. Okay, you see it's about 78. So right now, 88 is going to be your final approach speed for now. Okay. And then as we're coming into ground effect, then our eyes are just outside. So you're doing VREF plus, v -ref plus 10, so 88. Now you'll see as we make angle of different movements, angle of attack movements essentially, you'll see the donut shift a little bit. So you could just, in your minds, 90 is a good final approach speed right now. Stabilized approach criteria has been met. We're Good to go. Sounds good. All right, it's our third gear check as we approach 500 feet. Checklist done. Got three green. We'll keep our toes on the bottom of the rudder. We're going to taxi all the way down, make a right turn for Odyssey. So we will, uh, we don't get any points for landing on the numbers today. We'll it's go all the way down. It's a nice long runway. We'll go off the top. Thank you. Wow, look at the view off our wing. It's a cloudy day out here, and it's still beautiful. Cloud base on the departure end is about a thousand feet, a little bit less. So we have a little bit of a wind coming off the right Thank side. Thank you, Coast Guard departure, one to an estimate zero. Departure to the west, seven zero. Go, walk back to the ground. Negative, sound my frequency change. Looking good. Looking good. Now this yaw damper will turn off automatically at 200 yeah. feet, correct? 200 feet will come off, we'll call it out. Minimums, minimums. Continue. There it is, it's off, you have rudder authority. Oh, perfect. RNAV, runway 10. Runway 848, November Tower 10, continue, wind 110 at yeah, It's pretty much coming right down the runway. Looking good. You can start reducing that power smoothly to idle as you enter Marching ground effect. 2246, runway 10, to land, wind 110 Roger, clear to land, American, uh, 2246. Wow. Wow. I feel like you do this every day. Are you flying a vision jet on the side? Are you cheating on me here? <laughs> I don't know. What is this? I always say it's better to be lucky than good. But that was a smooth land. Get across to 14, contact ground. 301, Quebec. Man. Odyssey, vision jet, 777, Charlie Bravo. Expedite, right, kilo ground, 117. Right on Kilo, over to ground, there's Jet 777, Charlie Bravo. So they want us to have us expedite Charlie down to Kilo, and we'll go over to the ground, ground frequency. So welcome to Nassau, guys. I hope you enjoyed that flight. I, to me, it was an amazing flight. Amazing views, amazing crew. It was so much fun. Like I said, don't go anywhere. We're going to go check out this mega yacht and see what it's like to be a captain on this boat to sail it around the world. Well, no one clapped. It was the best landing. No one clapped. Oh. Come on, people. Come on. <laughs> Here's Third Kilo. Line, only one zero, American two, two, four, six. Ground, Vision Jet, 777, Charlie Brown, clear runway one zero, Kilo, taxi to Odyssey. November 777, Charlie Bravo, taxi Odyssey. Taxi Odyssey, Vision Jet, 777, Charlie Bravo. Ground Bravo Dollar. Checklist is complete. November 381, Quebec, Sierra. Next Taxi checklist will be the checkdown yeah, checklist. And right up here, this is Odyssey. This is the FBO that we'll be using. They also have customs here where we're going to clear in. I can see our marshaller here. We'll make a hard left. Look at that big flow plane right there. So that's not American caravan. 284, Nassau Ground, Pusher Boost 1 1. Yeah, we just went up to Jack Brown's and did our seaplane rating. That's great. So much fun. Highly recommended. All right, I can see our guy at 1 o'clock. Highland Wings 141, Nassau Ground, standby for taxi traffic entering Jet Nassau. Very good. He's going to have his park right up there in the front row. Yep, I can see us waving. I can see him waving. 
There you go. You see him? Yep. Cool. Got him Here we go. We'll be parking right between a Honda jet and a slotation. After holding at one four when we come to a stop, we'll just have a one minute cool down at idle power. November Perfect. Five, clear, five, clear, clear. Tango X ray. Cross runway one zero. Cross one zero three. Feels two, good to be back in the Bahamas. Right. Well done, Captain. Well, sounds good. Thank you, buddy. We cheated death one more time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Live to tell the story. Okay. One minute. Take your headsets off. Stay again. Play for beating. Have you take that dial and switch it to off. And then go ahead and push that button one time. Start button. This right here. Push it once quickly. Perfect. It's bleeding. It's awesome. All right, let's go explore. Let's do it. All right, and then from right to left, we'll turn all the stuff on. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. You used to be the big spender, grabbing the check every dinner, showing out to your girlfriend, best friends, just so they could wish they was with you. You ain't wanna hit the club with the pressure. Got you out trying to get a table and a picture. Everybody Snapchat pictures, but ain't nobody trying to drop on the liquor. Nah, nah. Been getting so twisted, tied on bye bye. Think we should leave at the iPad, but you forgot to save cash for the valet. All right, guys, we're here on the yacht Savannah, and we found Captain Matt. How long have you been uh, in the yachting industry, and how do you like it? Yeah, I've been in yachting for close to 19 years. Been on board Savannah for seven months. New, new command to me. Really love the yachting industry. Been doing it for that long. Hence, <laughs> hence my love of it. It's, uh, it's an amazing industry. You get to meet a lot of cool people. I can imagine. Great crew. So this is, you've been on this boat for or yacht for seven months now. What is it like transitioning onto a brand new boat that you've never been on before? Not easy. Not easy? No, it takes some time. There's two captains on board. Okay. So I share the, share the command with uh, Chris Durham, another friend of mine. Um, and yeah, learning the vessel. We're 273 feet, 273 meters. 273 feet. Is this the biggest yacht you've ever been on command of? Or? It's my largest captaincy. Is it? Uh, slightly smaller than a previous boat I've worked on before. That's How many other yachts significantly have you been on throughout your whole career? I've only worked on four yachts. Four my yachts career. total. Yeah. Well, so I think, Matt, we should uh, go up to the bridge and you could show us where all the magic happens to try to maneuver this thing around and show us the systems up there. Sounds great. Perfect. Happy to show it to you. Hey guys, welcome to the bridge of Savannah. We're quite a special boat. Um, I call it a boat. Steve was calling it a boat. We're a mega yacht, super yacht, whatever you like to call it. Something quite special about Savannah, she is a diesel electric uh, hybrid vessel, but also with this breathe propulsion system. So we have an Azzy pull and a pusher. Both are constant speed propellers with variable pitch and the Azzy pull allows us to have pretty excellent maneuverability. Um, they counter rotate. The counter rotating blades allow us to be more efficient than, say, a conventional yacht like Chaos behind us, which has uh, standard twin shaft, twin props. So this saves us about 30% of fuel on our efficiency, which is great. Um, that makes us quite special compared to most other yachts in the uh, yachting fleet. Uh, that's all controlled here. It's called the Breathe System, commissioned by Rolls Royce and FedShip. It's a little dim. It's like a big iPad. Yeah, basically. So all our different modes go in there. When we're maneuvering, we're using just the pod. We can also bring in the forward CPP pusher, and we have a large bow thruster as well to um, help us maneuver the boat alongside or in other conditions. Um, up on the bridge, we have our full CCTV camera system. allows us to see what's going on in the exterior, the engine room, all the technical spaces, um, make sure no one's where they shouldn't be. Obviously, it's security as well. Our radar, X-band radar, our transus navy sailor. This is our we're a full Actis bridge, meaning we don't carry any paper charts, much like your airplanes. Uh, our conning station. So on the right we have our bow thruster, which is our, our yaw for you, you airplane folk, left and right of the bow. Our forward pusher. It's all automated. Oh, wow. And then we have our Azzy pod, which Azzy pull, excuse me, which allows us to really maneuver the stern in any direction we wish, positive and negative pitch. Oh that's pretty sweet. Yeah. So our different propulsion modes, we have maneuvering, which is just solely on the Azipod, Azipol, and our bow thruster. We then go into diesel electric, which automatically changes our speed, uh, maintains our speed, but then brings us over to the forward propeller. We control both props with just a single uh, lever and allowing us to steer the ship with this tiny little wheel. Then we have our range mode, which will make, this will be more um, apparent when we get down to the engine room and we discuss the different propulsion. Because we're diesel electric, we run on generators, but we also have a 
one megawatt hour battery bank along with a auxiliary engine, which you'll find that funny when you see it. It's a 3000 horsepower, nine cylinder Wurzel engine. S-band or X-band radar, we can swap those back and forth. A redundancy to be fully paperless, we have to have full redundancy of our navigational charts. And then this is our AMS or monitoring system, which allows us to see everything from fuel consumption to electrical usage. Right now you can see our power distribution, which is our Caterpillar generators. We have a C32, two C18s, an emergency generator, and then our battery bank. This is also the Wardzilla down here. So you can see our current state of charge, 61% on either bank. Um, you can see then we have our fuel consumption, our fuel totals, excuse me. Right now we have 120,000 liters on board. Max capacity is 172,000 liters. Wow, that's quite a bit of fuel. Absolutely. How long do you usually go if you top off? How long would it take to have to re-top off again? It depends on our speed, obviously. Our, our range mode is our most efficient, 12 and a half to 13 knots, and we can go about four and a half to 5,000 nautical miles, depending on uh, the weather conditions and, and current. Well, Matt, that was pretty cool to get to see the bridge up here. Uh, I'd like to know, being a captain, you know, how, you have how many crew on board this boat? 24. 24. You're the captain. I would like to see where your accommodations and where you get to call home while you're out at sea and underway. Can you show us that? Absolutely. So right behind the bridge here, the first door. We keep the captains close to hand. And this is where I get to sleep and work. We have a little bit of an office here and a nice ensuite. A tremendous view compared to a lot of, uh, a lot of vessels that I've worked on before. Yeah, definitely. So you got very a, lucky. It's a beautiful area to be able to call home. And I work across from the chief officer and financial officer who have their office here right next door. So everyone's close together. And what time of work do they do in here? A lot of administrative tasks. The majority of our job is not running the vessel in terms of maneuvering. Uh, we spend a lot of time budgeting, accounting, scheduling. We have 42 crew on the payroll. So there's a lot of people to come and go, flights, organizing, everything like that. So here we are on the mooring deck. As you can see, it's also doubles up as a crew gym. So when we have guests on board, the crew often come up here to work out or stretch. We've got our mooring platforms that lower down at the sides here behind me and off to your left there, Steve-O. Allow the crew to see where we're going when we're docking um, and to throw our lines ashore. Oh, so those doors open up behind you and Absolutely. they can stand out there? Yes, they fold down. We have handrails that go in. Allows us to throw our heating lines ashore, get our lines ashore, tie up the boat or unmoor the vessel. We also have our anchors which allow us to stop and not be underway. How so long of anchor chain do you have? So we carry eight shackles per side. Eight shackles, so how long is that? So one shackle is 27 and a half meters. Okay. Yeah. So we tend not to anchor anything more than 80, 90 meters max, otherwise it starts getting a bit uh, iffy, but if you have the bombs, you don't have to worry about it, you're anchoring in seven meters. Basically just drop it and don't have to use much chain. So an intricate system here, as you can see, it goes up and over, which um, can offer some complexity. I see a sign here, it says, caution, the mooring deck is a snap back zone. Yeah, so when we're tying up, we're using these uh, capstans or windlass also as a capstan we can unclutch them so when they're not using them for anchoring operations we tighten our mooring lines with them and if you snap a line I don't know, you can do a YouTube dive on that and see what a line can do to a person if, uh, if you get hit by it. Definitely won't be pr wouldn't be pretty. No. Back here on the midship I believe they have a nice gym where Captain Matt said they can actually use all this equipment when there's no guests on board. You can work out with a view. There we go. Is it, am I doing the right form? I don't know, but it's good to always stay in shape. Down, down, down we go. Where do you think we're gonna be going next? In the uh, laundry area, <laughs> got a lot of washer and dryers. All right, so in here, we're in the laundry room, but just forward is our battery room. It really makes our hybrid diesel electric system what it is, and so that sort of makes Savannah, Savannah. It allows us to really be a little more efficient and and run our machinery more efficiently so our generators are always uh, charging something instead of running under load. And these are all the batteries. Wow, so these are all the batteries. My goodness. We're actually upgrading these to two and a half megawatt hour. All the batteries are coming out. And with technology that's advanced these days, we can almost triple our capacity. And it goes all the way around. Both sides. A lot of batteries. All right, so we'll head through the engine room. Some people really love the engine room, some don't like it, but it really is the heart of the ship. Our propulsion, our water makers are there. Everything that we need to keep the vessel running happens behind this door. Wow. Oh 
my gosh, this thing is amazing. All right, so welcome to the engine room on Savannah. As you can see, it's also set up as a workshop, but uh, primarily what you see is what you get. We have got two generator rooms either side, which helps keep the noise down for when we're sitting in port, just running on generators. Um, really, the, the centerpiece is our Wardzilla nine-cylinder, 3,000 horsepower engine, which um, can run both propellers and the entire hotel load. So we just run the entire vessel on this one engine. Um, if we kick up into higher speed modes, we start really pushing it. We've got a top speed of 17 knots. Then we start bringing on the other generators, giving us that additional power that we need. Not very efficient. We try not to do it very much. So really run this as much as we can. Our most efficient, slow speed engine. It runs about 1,000 RPM. Uh, that's obviously the main engine exhaust goes up through that stainless steel. You can see it, all the engines have that stainless steel uh, shroud, which also insulates it, prevents the heat from really heating up the engine room and also getting our emissions out of the vessel. So as I'm sure you can tell I'm not an engineer, but this is where the chief engineer, second and third, get to spend some of their time when they're not out fixing the rest of the equipment out on the uh, decks or inside the engine room. But ECR is called the engine control room and allows them to monitor and control all the ship systems. So this is our tender garage. It's midships. Both shell doors open up. This side opens down, this side opens up. We've got two uh, four-ton gantry cranes which help launch our tenders. Hold two laser sailboats, multiple kayaks, paddle boards, three cedars, two A wake surfboards, e foils, um, every inflatable you can imagine, fishing gear, paddle gear. So, this is where really all our water sports is launched from and, and how we keep everything nice and clean and looked after. It's really great having boats kept inside. So, the reason why we're actually here today is Captain Matt is a pilot in aviation and Charlie was his flight instructor about five years ago. So Matt was probably one of my first students when I first started out and started doing primary training and um, he's very humble about it but he was definitely one of the star students meaning that he sold on his second flight lesson he finished the minimum 40 hours and um, you know it was it was rewarding having that brush stroke in his aviation career but uh, you know we've become very close friends since that time and now we fly formation to Key West and it's just a good time just uh, you know it's probably one of the most fun things that I get to do besides doing training is just breaking off with guys like Matt when they're not working and and uh, just kind of enjoying and sharing aviation together. What type of airplane are you currently flying? Uh, so I'm uh, part owner in a, a 1969 Mooney M20F. Oh sweet, that's so, gotta be a lot of fun. Um, I'm not IFR rated yet, so I try to you know stay humble, stay safe, and try to yeah. So flying yeah. You as a captain, you know, in a career and all that, you have different challenges. Uh, coming over to this type of career, I'm sure you have a lot of challenges that you have to navigate being a captain on a yacht. What, what would be some of the most challenging aspects of captaining a, a yacht like this? For sure. I think a misnomer might be that everyone thinks the captain is just driving the boat all the time. And honestly, that's the funnest part. As you saw, the propulsion system is amazing. It's really maneuverable, great fun to drive. Um, often I'm not touching it though. I'm letting the chief officer and second officer drive the boat. I want them to be getting that experience. Um, I think when you become qualified at something and feel confident teaching others is very rewarding. Um, and so driving the boat's the easy part. We're not doing it very much. And when we're crossing the Atlantic, we're staring at a window, making sure that, you know we don't come into contact with other vessels. Um, but really the hard part is managing the crew. Managing the crew. That's interesting. I mean, you are a, like a supervisor of this whole operation and you got to make sure it runs efficiently and safely. Absolutely. We've got 40, 40 employees on the books, 40 crew that come and go. Um, and not to say they're a problem. We, we have a lovely crew on board Savannah. I'm very fortunate to work here. Um, but that takes up the majority of our time is moving people in and off the boat and making sure that we maintain a high level of service. Uh, with the clientele we have on board really demand the best and we have to run at a high level. Yeah. Well, guys, we'd like to really thank Captain Matt for having us on board uh, Savannah. And thank you also for Charlie for bringing us over in the Vision Jet today. It was an amazing day, an amazing experience. Uh, thank you so much for having us on board. No problem, and, uh, Steve. Anyway, we look forward to seeing you guys again in the future. If you guys like the video, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel. I'll also link everybody's social media in the, in the links down below. If you want to click on any of those, be sure to give them a follow. We anyway, hope all is good and we'll talk to you again someday soon.
to sleep at night. You see the stars are out. 